Thanks for joining us, Nate. Just talk a little bit about your work and the fact that you really want to sort of build that bridge between young people and the future opportunities, many of which they may not even realize exist. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, Tara. And, and when you look at the opportunities that are available in today's world, so many people, I don't care what age, and I think especially the young age, there's things out there that people didn't even know existed and their parents don't know existed. Um, you know, when you look at a, an eye-opening moment, my background in economic development had me in, in companies uh, talking about workforce challenges over the last decade and how to overcome them. And of course, it still continues even worse today and after the pandemic. Um, there's all these jobs that these companies have. That I think people don't know what they are and they're like, well, I want to I show people what we have. Uh, so, you know, you start having conversations with students about what their next steps are. And right away, that first conversation is college or it's a trade school or whatever it happens to be. But the gap that I have found in our com my conversations and trying to connect these businesses that have positions or, uh, or students that are looking to figure out what their next step is or worried parents that are like, I don't want my kid moving back home and living in the basement or on my couch. You know, the gap is, okay, we need to showcase what's out there uh, to high school students. And, and I have found it even more so, um, not more so than high school students, but more so today, uh, college students. Um, you're dealing right now with uh, college juniors and seniors that missed out on their high school experience, um, that they didn't get to have the college visits and the job shadows and the explorations. So they're going through some of the same challenges I see high school seniors having, uh, but these kids are in college and they're on a pathway looking to see where can they go. And, and that's something that really shined to me over the last few years is there's information out there that people have available to them, but they don't know how to use it or, or know they can use it. And I have found comfortability in, in finding how can I help those students be confident and comfortable or confident and, and, uh, uh, and confident in where they're going after high school and know why they're doing it. Um, you know, there's, it's very satisfying work when you see somebody like I just saw the other day, a kid that we had to go through a, a program that I was in and all of a sudden he's on a pathway to cybersecurity after taking a year off because he didn't know where he was going, but he went back to the training and things like that he was on and, and he's a productive contributing member of society in our community. Um, you know, it's, I, I, there's a lot to unpack, I think, Tara, and what I just talked through, because uh, I found myself, I get caught up in, in this because it's so exciting uh, of trying to figure out which avenue do I go down to, to what story and experience can I share with you? When you think about the great resignation as it's being dubbed and how many people bailed because they realized the job that they were maybe removed from and isolated from during COVID is not one they wanted to go back to, what are you seeing with this shift? Have we come to a place where employees are in the driver's seat or is the grass not really greener and people are wanting to go back to the job they thought they hated because now they realize, like you said, maybe that new opportunity it didn't pan out to be what we thought. You know, um, there's jobs out there that you know, when we were in that age, we didn't know existed, you know, other than maybe we had to pull up the encyclopedia, right? Or saw it in a magazine. And now you can pull up a job board or, or a website or whatever. You see all these jobs out there. So, you know, it, it's hard, I think, for somebody to come through and get a job and then they see this other job or a friend got this job. And, and I don't think it's necessarily about switching for more money, but I think with the, uh, with the great resignation had happened coming after the pandemic, people... I think open their eyes to, I don't want my life to be like this. And I think especially our younger generations, and I'll give them credit uh, to a fault, that they didn't wanna live like the older generations did. They wanted to be able to have more freedom and do things uh, and expand their horizons. Um, you know, there's there's value that they have in, in what they, that generation has done compared to, you know, what older generations gotta be a part of. Are they a wealthier generation? No as far as financially, but, you know, when it comes into, are they happier? Possibly. Uh, but as far as a great resignation, I think, I, I think you hit it on the head. I think it's going to happen where they're going to start slowing down going, well, maybe it wasn't so bad where I was at. And 
companies, I think, are now opening their eyes to, you know, people are jumping ship to go here for a different benefit or, or more money they think they're going to get. Um, I think companies now are going to look at how can they retain because no one really focuses so much on retaining employees as they do on gaining employees. So how as a manager, how as a leader, can you, can you work with your, your teams to see where your gaps are? How can you keep them engaged? How can you keep them working and following your mission? But again, I'll step it up again. That's going to take managers to try and change some things there that it's not just top down. This is what I, this is my place. You do what I tell you to do. Uh, it's got to be more collaborative um, when it comes to that manager piece. And, you know, I said the word engagement and what really stood out to me all well, probably six years ago. So the Gallup poll that comes out every year on workforce engagement. And I think right now it's like 28% of, of people working are actually engaged in their work. That's kind of scary. You know, when you look at the rest of those people staying in the shower or sitting in their truck going, I don't want to go to work today. Because they don't, they're engaged in it, you know, because Tara, I've been there. I've been sitting there going, I don't want to do this job because I don't get it. And I think that's where some people are in, in that great resignation. They're looking for that. They're looking for a place to be engaged in, not necessarily looking to go somewhere for more money because they can put a value on the money or can put a metric on it. But you can't put that metric on, I, I guess, the feeling of being engaged, if that makes sense. What is your advice to not just young people, but a person of any age when it's almost overwhelming now thinking of all the job opportunities available? I mean, before it was like, grab your local newspaper and circle the one ads or the mm -hmm. classifieds. Now it's millions of postings online. And how do you sort through it and not be overwhelmed, but be strategic about really finding the right fit? You know, so much is getting held up on now on, on the way what's offered money wise or what's offered benefit wise or schedule wise or what, but that only goes so far. You know, uh, there's a, a group out of Utah um, that has a motivators assessment that I've been a part of. And there's 23 different traits that come into what you're motivated to do. And actually, I think it's 8% of the population is actually motivated by money and like, and like uh, awards. The rest of them get into different various, like mine is, uh, uh, is problem solving is my number one motivator. So like, you know, there's a problem comes up, I get excited to try and solve that. Although I did learn uh, uh, at home, that's not always the case. You're not supposed to solve every problem. Uh, you're just supposed to listen, which I still struggle with. But um, when you look at advice to people, and the big thing I focus on when I work with students, and I've worked with young professionals, and I've worked with people in their second or third careers, I want to see and try and figure out what work are they wired to do. You know, and I don't like to talk about what job you should have, what job fits you, what career path should you be on. It comes down to what work, you know, fits you. And I, I think I found that with the work, just for example, the work I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm helping to connect people with, with opportunities and introducing people. Um, you know, there's some marketing traits in there. There's some communication traits, um, relationship building. Those are all the traits of how, of items within if I was going to write a, what job do you want? Those would be traits I'd want in my job. Um, I get into some personality. Uh, I offer up some personality assessments like a Myers-Briggs and, and there's, there's a narrative in one of the reports that talks through how you work or what environments you like to be in. Do you like to be with people? Do you not like to be with people? Do you like to work with teams? Do you like pressure? That type of thing. So it's interesting uh, as you're trying to funnel that through and find that needle in a haystack that's gonna fit you. I think people forget like job sites like Indeed or Monster or whatever, those are search engines. You put in those keywords that identified how you work, what you like to work, that stuff comes up in those job descriptions. And, and I've seen people's eyes when they pull that up and they're like, well, what's this? I didn't know what a, uh, a business analyst actually does that they get to, you know, what they get to work on or, or different jobs that are out there. And it and it's it's uh it's very uh, I would say entertaining, but also very 
exciting when someone sees something they didn't know was a job that they could get into. You know, look at the work you're doing right now, Tara. I'm sure you never even thought about what this could be, you know, leaving the TV anchor desk and and ended up uh, in, in the work that you're doing, or, or even for that matter, the work you were doing beforehand in, in within schools, that these things are out there. And how, how do you get involved in, in every one of those jobs? And, I, you know, I've, I've watched you in the little box how far and been in some meetings the last 10 years. And um, you're still using those same skill sets you learned in journalism school and broadcasting school. And I think people forget that. They forget the stuff they enjoyed about the jobs they had and how can you pull that together and find work or opportunities that, that fit how you like to work and where you like to work and who you like to work with. That's great insight. And I love what you said about it's not so much the drivers that everyone necessarily thinks because maybe I get more money, but then what's my quality of life like, which seems to be so much more important, especially post pandemic. So my final question for you then is how is our relationship with work going to evolve from here? Are we going to see, you know, more of the hybrid and virtual work as the answer to being able to have a better personal professional life balance? I mean, where do you see, you know, all of these now technology driven, especially industries heading? I think that is where it's heading. I think the pandemic showed, um, that you can do stuff locally anywhere, uh, if you will, uh, as far as technology. And, you know, you don't have to do jump on a plane to go do a business meeting anymore. I think it all became accepted. Um, and that's what I think the market is going to drive. You asked me that previous question. Is it a, is it a, is it an employee? Is it an employee's market? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's more of them than jobs or there's, there's more jobs available than people out there to take them. So when it comes down trying to find that right person, that's going to be hard for companies because they want to see why are you involved? Uh, why do you want this job? Is it just because you can sit on the beach and do the work? And you know what kind of work are you actually going to do? Uh, I do fear there's companies that uh, are slow to fire right now uh, because there is a mindset amongst some employees. You need me more than I need you and they are taking full advantage of it. But at what point does that just start hitting a ceiling and it doesn't work anymore? Uh, I think what eventually will happen is you're gonna see less businesses and less companies uh, out there. And it very well, it's gonna have an impact on our economy. I'm not an economist, but I gotta think it, it, can't, uh, it can't continue the way we thought it was before the recession. Um, but the driver will be that I do worry about is the relationships and the connections. And I think there's some companies that are doing some really good things that they've found to keep employee engagement with a company that's based out of Atlanta, but they've got workers all over the country that they have found ways to try and keep uh, people engaged, interacting and having relationships. Those are the ones that I think are going to be able to do it right. Uh, but the ones that are willing to revert back to pre-pandemic, this is how we is. It's time to come in back in the office. We got to do how it is. It's going to be a struggle. You know, it, I, it may not matter what that brand name is anymore uh, of working for a Google or a Coca-Cola or an Amazon or you name whatever company it happens to be. I, I don't think it'll be about the brand name. It's going to be about how how the workers are treated. Mm -hmm.